Oh, hello and welcome to another review here at Die Grüne Order. Today, this is the first review for Kings of War. And we have re received the Gamers Edition from a fan, basically, from the Spartan Games Forum. Captain Dan sent us this book. Uh, he had two um, of it by chance, so he wanted to show it to us. He had seen that we have some fantasy armies here in the room. And I've read the book by now. I like the gameplay. It reads good. We have done one small test game. A friend of mine, Samu, has directly bought some figures. We will show them next, the forces of nature. And then we will show games with our old Games Workshop based armies. I'm not yet buying another army, but there are interesting models in here. So maybe you never know. Uh, yeah. This is the Gamers Edition, so all the fluff is missing and it's shorter than the real book. And you can see there are always some links here to page 50 something. So there are something like 40 pages missing with the um, fluff rules. It's Reading it, it sounds quite easy. Uh, short rules, not too much special rules. It still feels good. Um, our first game felt nice, my uh, Goblin Wolf Rider Wark or Fleabag Wark here in this game uh, felt like it should, fast, maybe a little bit more powerful than they had been in the Games Workshop edition, but I of course had the advantage to know what my army is supposed to do and they kind of behaved similar what I like so we will go on and show this game so you can basically use models from any producer of course Mantic has their own models for all these nice um, armies that are in here specific ones I won't buy another set of Goblin Wolf Riders I have about a hundred models there so not necessary, but the uh, chaos demons things that are, are is an army that I would be interested in. Okay, so how does the book start? Directly into the rules, since the fluff is missing. We have the infantry, a, a troop description. Every troop type has different sizes. You can have troops, regiments, hordes, and legions. Uh, legions are not possible for cavalry and um, Troops not for the large infantry, large cavalry, basically. One regiment stays together, you don't remove models, that's a huge difference to other games. You would count the um, damage, basically, and then roll your moral again with that damage as modifier if the troop leaves the field. You can also have war engines, monsters, or heroes. Base sizes are defined here, and now every Troop, Regiment, Horde has a specific size and that's the size they will take all over the game and you're not fighting about is the last model on the right side or on the left side of the base, do I reach it or do I not reach it. It's always a defined space that this unit takes. Something I really like, makes it easy. You can also build nice models with the unit base, all of them in action, you don't have to sort them after every game. One of the main reasons to, to do this style here. Um, you have a unit leader point. This is the center of the, the front arc. You have arcs, as you would expect them. Okay, place your boss in there. You will not put in heroes in there, as in other games. Um, you're defining the line of sights. Every unit gets a height. Here, by their unit type, they get height levels. And of course, if you're standing on a terrain that is higher, this increases your height level and then uh, to higher ones block line of sight for lower ones for the smaller ones we have the stats and we have a speed that's movement we have a melee ra rating that's for close quarter combat we have a shooting ranged attack we have a damage rating that's when they do damage number of attacks and then the moral um, which is called nerve here which has two values 
if you roll above the first, it's, you're wavering. If you roll above, above the second, you're rooting. And then points, depending on size. And it doesn't double if you double the number of people and uh, figures in one unit. There are also rules to define how many regiments and um, the later picking a force and troops you can take for every regiment here you are allowed to take two troops and one special war engine monster or hero if you go for hordes or a legion you can take four troops one war engine one monster one hero this is the base rule for all army setup not more necessary than that but let's go back here then we go for the turn move face shoot face melee face Rerolls, of course, there are rerolls, but you can never roll reroll a reroll dice. Describe how which dice mechanics we have: a d6, a d3, and two d6, basically, and they are similar as in every other game. Move. You can stay where you are. Hold order. Change facing. Turn. Pivot on the center. Advance. Um, during advance, you can make one pivot on the center again. Uh, you can go back, straight backwards, half speed, side step. You can go to the side, your yeah, half speed, at the double, so twice your range and charge, which is also moving the du double range, so with at the double. Units can interpenetrate while moving, but not if they are in melee. Then you have to walk around. Um, you can charge if you can already see the target and it's in your front arc. Um, Distance is then measured from your unit's leader point to the closest point of the target. If that's okay, you reach it. Um, moving chargers yeah, must use the shortest way, but they cannot interpenetrate with other units. Flank or rear charges, if you happen and are able to do that, you will double your melee dice for flank and triple for rear charges. And you always have to attack that side where your unit leader point is in if you can see them corner to corner charges this is not possible what you see here that you just hit on the corner after an attack you will then get arranged if you attack with several regiments um, even if this one is the same size two of them will fit the last one won't fit if you have a hero which is a single model in the middle it can go in here and both have enough space if the hero is from the outside since it can't walk through interpenetrate the other charging unit it can't go to the middle then just two of these can attack you could then of course choose a and c okay terrain yeah there's blocking terrain difficult terrain slowing down it has um nice decorative terrain okay you can just say this tree here is just for decoration um, shooting take all the dice you have your ranged attack uh, value you modify by if you have been moving if the opponent is in cover and maybe others there are special rules uh, then you roll the dice if you have hit you pick up the dice against roll for damage against your damage value of, now of the opponent um, that depends on the, the his defenses okay if you do damage then you can do a nerve test roll 2d6 compared to the nerve value see if they are wavering or rooting melee if you are there you basically use the um, melee value you have some modifiers you have a hindered charge through some terrain minus one um, special special rules thunderous charge gives plus one or plus two um, damage is the same process as for shooting and then testing move after you won if the other ones have rooted you can regroup and place in any direction you want if the target remains you pull back and now it's the turn of your opponent or in his turn he will attack most likely um, and then he rolls his dice so during your attack only your side rolls dice 
and not both sides. So in your turn, things like the strong Imperial Knights uh, can't kill a small unit of, from your side and run into the next unit. You can potentially overrun into another room unit if you are attacking um, heroes. War engines have a 50 by 50 base, at least at the front, and if you have a bigger base for scenic reasons you should measure from here for sight lines. That's basically the most important thing. You always triple melee dice if you're attacking a war machine, um, which is bad for war machines. Individuals are nimble, they can move and shoot, um, they can see everything basically. Or before being given an order, an individual may pivot to face any direction for free. So, rules-wise, they don't see anything, but they can pivot in that moment. Melee, the individual will turn, so it's no facing, no, no, uh, you never get the double or triple attacks against them. Then we have special rules like a big shield, so you bring your own shield, uh, which gives you defense, brutal, crashing strength, inspiring. Phalanx, that's the spears basically. If you attack with thunderous charge, you don't get that rule as the effect. Okay, and then two pages of special rules. Now we are at the picking a force section, which I've already showed. There are allies at the alignments. There is a good and a bad side here on Mantica. And neutral, good, evil, and neutral. Um, and you can mix between them, uh, kind of. Magical artifacts, of course you can buy special upgrades. There are smaller ones, bigger ones, they are the same for all races in here. And then you have spells, spells basically look like a fireball uh, N, so it's an N dice shooting attack, basically. Uh, and the others are wind blast, similar lightning bolt, yeah. Gets piercing a special rule, and of course there's a range for this attack. Scenarios, 6, kill, invade, dominate, pillage, loot, and kill, and pillage. The most will take 6 turns, then you roll if it ends. Set up 12 inch for both sides, but it's defined from the middle, not your not 12 inch in. So even on a German table, which normally is 120 by um, 180, that's close to 4 by 6 feet, um, with defining it from the middle, there is no real um, problem, since our table is basically one centimeter smaller than the inch one. Okay. And in others here at Pillage, you have loot markers that you have to control. That's similar to other games. Timed games. It's really fun play against the chess clock here. Yeah. Why not? Uh, works co good with this. Um, game, something we have to try, and you get a lot of force lists directly in this book. There's a second book with force lists then, which you could add. Um, here are the forces of Basilea, kind of, yeah, mankind uh, with some, the Bureau of the Holy Icon, a sisterhood, panther chariot, really cool models. Dwarven armies with a small dog. <laughs> There's a special rule for this one. The Dwarven throw no. Twenty breed of war dogs. Yeah. It's just funny to read. Read it yourself. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> uh, okay. You will find most of your regiments that you know from other games here or you buy. Mantic um, models both look cool. I'm more Likely to do with dark dwarfs or bad dwarfs army. I will come here, chaos dwarfs, elven armies. One type, yeah. These are kind of not my figures. I like elves. I have elves for Games Workshop, but in this case, I would never buy these. Kind of others, Kingdom of Man. I like the figures. Um, these are just cool, but this is, I think, Fireforge orcs. Just a cool model here, this guy, the Marauder. I might get this one for my army. 
forces of nature, the meads and these um, lizards here, look really, really cool. That's the one we will show you next. Ogre armies, they always look different than the Games Workshop ones. These look much more mean. Um, yeah, cool. Um, I have an ogre army. I won't buy a second, but these look really cool. Then forces of the abscess. This is something I could imagine here to get sukuis and hellhounds. This is something I like and I don't have yet, so why not? Episode dwarves. With these rules, I think this would be the first army that I could imagine to do for um, Kings of War. And then of course here the goblins, where I have a full army which performs qu performed quite well. Why not use it? And we will try to run it against the others. Orcs, again, I have a big army here. Um, but I really like these chariots. I can't imagine to add up some more chariots. I like fast armies. Undeads. Yeah, the Mantic Undead models, we are using them for Frostgrave, I've seen them already, we have painted them, are really cool models, and here's the army for them. Okay, we will give you an opinion on the different army lists when we test them. There are enough fantasy armies around to do testing for basically everything, and uh, what is not there, uh, maybe we get them in here, into our gaming group. Thanks for watching, please leave a comment. Bye-bye. And special thanks to Captain Dan.